Welcome to the Mischief. I'm Valen, and this is Embers, Machinations of Fire, Part 1. So previously, those may already know, we covered Natural Energy Part 1 and Natural Energy Part 2, and basically uh, told people how they can obtain some of the raw materials to get into this mod. Today we're covering Machinations of Fire, Part 1 which is going to be moving items and fluids. Now, I realized last time, if you were following along with this, that uh, I had said we would be getting into a lot of the uh, ember stuff. We are going to be getting into moving ember around as well, but first I figured it's very important that you know how to actually move things to where you need them to be so that you can actually use them. <laughs> so we're going to start off with uh, some item transfer, automatic breaker, item vacuum, mechanical access, the reservoir, and the item dropper. I feel I should also mention a few small things that I may have uh, neglected to mention in the past. And that is if you take an ember crystal, toss it in here, you'll get six ember shards. And that's right, you can take those six ember shards and you can then recraft them into an ember crystal. So it's just like, you know, a block of coal versus a regular coal. Uh, and that, that should pretty much help some people out. Uh, also, uh, a lot of the materials that uh, we have in uh, embers, you know, like the different, uh, it, like silver and tin and things of that nature. If uh, I bring up embers here, uh, you should also know that just to use swords as an example, uh, you can make the different tools and weapons from vanilla out of each of these different ones. Copper, silver, lead, dawnstone, which we'll get into in part two, aluminum, uh, bronze, electrum, nickel, tin, etc. Depending on your mod pack and what is available to you. But otherwise, you should be able to make most of those. And they do have different values. You can see that they are, you know, somewhat stronger in some ways, somewhat weaker in others, similar to iron or just shy of diamond. Uh, so that that's just for your little FYI. Now, uh, we're going to start off with uh, the, if you go to Machinations of Fire, which is your t uh, tab here, if you start at the top, we're working kind of clockwise here, we're going to be working on item transfer, which can be a bit confusing. Just remember, it's an extremely simple system. It is not intended to be used for, uh, you know, heavy duty stuff for organizing because, well, I guess you could, but it it would be very intensive. And you know what? Um, I'm, I'm kind of thinking it fits the theme of the mod. You don't want a really heavy inventory system, you know, like a refined storage or, or something along that nature for this. Instead, it's very simple tech. So what I've got in here is a, about 16 signs or so in a chest. Uh, I just chose an obsidian chest. It, it figured that it fit with the theme in my mind. But uh, of course I have, as usual, item pumps and item pipes coming out of it so that it will pump the, uh, the signs out into another inventory. Now I have two inventories over here, another couple chests. They're both empty. And I have an item transfer uh, here, which if, if I, I bring this up here, let's Let's bring up the item transfer, if you're going to be using it at least. It is very simple to make. It's just a bunch of lead and you get a couple of them, which is good because if you're going to be using these at all, at all you're going to be uh, wanting a whole bunch of them. Now, uh, there are many ways that you can use these. Let's get rid of this. I didn't want that many. Uh, if you place one down, uh, basically the direction that the pipe is going, let's say I grab some pipe here and I'm putting this down and I put down item transfer block. You want it to go in this direction. Going the other direction, it's not going to filter the way that you want it to. So just remember, if you're uh, looking at it, it's going to want to go in the direction uh, of, well, it, you, as you see here. So <laughs> that's the easiest way to say it. Uh, so with that in mind, uh, it will take priority over other transfers. Now, uh, how this works is you want your item transfer blocks to be connected at an intersection. So if there's two pipes coming off, if it's just going down a line, it, it might get stuck at it. For instance, if this is not here and you've got something that is uh, designed not to go in there, like for instance, I have item transfer blocks only going in here, it might get stuck in the pipe. So you're going to want to make sure that it is only connected at intersections. Uh, and if you, uh, well, as I showed you there, if you want to filter things, you just have an item in your hand and you right click. And that will mean all items. Now, if you right click again with a specific item, in this case, an item pipe, it will then put a ghost of that image in place. It will not actually use up the item. And then it will filter just those down this line. So if you want, just by having the, uh, the your item transfer block here, it will actually, uh, you know, just not filter anything, but it will prioritize one line over the other. So you see that this line is actually longer 
and this line is actually shorter. So therefore, feasibly, it should go to the obsidian chest if the item transfer is not in there. So let me grab this. I'll actually grab a bit of pipe and put it in there. And if you need to actually adjust these, you can just use your little tinker's hammer to take out the excess pipes that you don't need. So in this case, it might split off evenly. So let's actually do this here and do that. You can see that they all disappear. And you can see that some of them went into this chest, some of them went into this chest, uh, and that's that's pretty much your standard. If you have splits, it's going to go somewhat even into both of them. Not, not really. It's kind of random. So if I break this, put down an item transfer in this spot here, it will then prioritize this line because it has an item transfer block in there. Now if I put these signs back in here, they instantly get filtered. Let's look in this chest, there's nothing. In this chest has 16, which is excellent. Now, if I put something like this in place, all right, so it's only going to filter just the item transfer blocks instead of the signs. Then a little something different is going to happen. Did I actually have all 16? Yes, I did. So you can see nothing actually came into this chest. It did get sorted, but it went to the other chest. That was only the one. There we go. I have 16 here. Let's, let's do a whole 16 stack. Get rid of that excess. And it should go all into this one here. So this is excluding uh, basically anything except for item transfer blocks, which if I toss this in there, the item transfer block comes into this area. So that's the basics of item transfer blocks. If you want to sort into a system, uh, I recommend that you just have it run down in a line. You don't want to branch it off. You just want it to go in sequential order and then snake around or something like that. It's probably your best bet because then at every intersection, it's going to stop and go, do I continue on or is there a filter? And there is a filter, gold. So if I have gold, it's going to go into this inventory. All right, if not, then it's going to continue on to the next item and so on. And it will go down here so that you'll get all these. Now what I have in this chest to be sorted is a whole bunch of different ingots that comply with the different ones I have uh, item frames out here for, plus a few extra item frames just for stuff that is to be sorted at the end. So if I flick this lever, all the stuff slowly gets taken out. As you can see, there's a little bit of a slowdown every now and then as it's trying to figure things out. And you can see that items are currently being stacked into their respective bins because I have them filtered out in the back. And of course, a bin is only going to hold a stack of items. And I have this here, which is catching anything extra that is not already sorted on here. So if I toss in like an ember gate, uh, one of these gauges here, it is going to go into the miscellaneous chest as well. So there you go. That's pretty much the item transfer block. It's really cool, very simple. Um, it can be a bit confusing if you try and use it uh, with too many branches. So I do recommend you just keep it in a straight line to keep things, well, basic and easy for you. Now, let's move on to the next item here, which is going to be uh, in your book here. We're going to go to the item dropper. And this, this is actually a lot of fun, uh, in my mind at least. It is not gated with any kind of speed. It will more or less drop everything almost immediately, but not quite. It will uh, kind of just pour it out almost like a liquid. And I have something here to demonstrate this. So I've got 32 iron ore with a hopper. Now the hopper is what's going to slow things down. So it, it, those that are familiar with vanilla, hopper will drop things like one, two, three, four, five. Whereas this will just kind of spew it all out in a big bleh as you'll see, and it'll eventually slow down because of the hopper that it is currently in place with. So you can see, there you go. That's that's pretty much how it is, and now it is gated <laughs> to uh, slow down due to the uh, hopper's speed at that rate. Now, I've, I've got it going in a permanent circle, which is just kind of entertaining. But an item dropper, let's look that up here. I currently have one. There we go. It's just iron pipe and a couple iron ingots. Now, why would you need these? You'll need them later on for a melter, or perhaps uh, one of these, uh, your, um, oh, I can't remember the name of it at the moment. It is the uh, the hearth coil uh, or other items. Maybe you want something dropped into the world, like Batania. Uh, you want to feed some of your flowers, whatever. Uh, this is a really good solution for that. Of course, I'm just going to let it slowly feed all the blocks back in. But that's, that's pretty much for the item dropper. Really useful uh, in some applications, not all. So, next up. We're going to cover the automatic breaker. Now, this is actually a really, really cool in my mind. Uh, the automatic breaker is not 
Well, it, it's very specifically used, but it can be used in a very creative fashion in my mind. Uh, so in this application, I have a practical use for it. But the, the, uh, the automatic breaker is made with a couple iron plates, iron ingot, some lead ingots, and a piece of redstone. And I definitely agree that it needs to have a piece of redstone in there because you're going to need to have at least mined down to a very low level <laughs> because it is very OP in some ways. For instance, I have it laying on its side. All I basically did was I just placed it uh, up against a block uh, like, well, let's see if I can even do it like that. Uh, otherwise, when you place it down on the ground, it will stand up. Uh, and of course, any block that you place on top of it, it will break uh, more or less. I mean, if I put bedrock on there, it, it's not going to work. But here's the really cool thing is that I currently have a lava bucket. And the lava bucket, if I pour this next to this b uh, block of water, turns into obsidian. Well, guess what? That also will then just turn it into instantly breaking. It, it, it's really good. Really, really good. So if, if you can make yourself one of these things, you could even bring it down to that level uh, of, you know, where you find a bunch of lava or obsidian, and you can place it in a way that it would break the block practically almost instantly. Or you can just bring the lava back to your own base uh, using potentially a fluid vessel, and then you can, uh, you know, use this to make your own. So, which also, if you notice, I have another item over here, which brings us to our next one. And that is the item vacuum, which is fantastic. It has a really big range. It's pretty darn fast. Uh, it's better than most vacuums in my experience. So you've got uh, just a few lead ingots and an item pipe. And that, that's pretty much it. It just needs some kind of redstone signal in order for it to work. Now, if I grab a piece of, let's see, this here. Turning on a redstone signal to the automatic breaker doesn't work. It just auto always automatically works. It will automatically break things. Now the item vacuum. This will not work unless you turn it on. You turn it on and it will start sucking things up. So if I drop a couple of, well, look at that. It's, it, it's sucking things up from a really good distance away. You can see I'm really far away over here. There we go. So it, it can go quite a distance and it also goes uh, the, like horizontal from it as well. So you, you really have a lot of uh, use for this if you want it to pick things up. Using that in combination with like a block dropper if you want, you can have a lot of fun. Uh, but uh, it also works in good applications like this. Uh, if you are worried about something uh, potentially uh, like breaking uh, and it, it will pick it up almost instantly so you can have some kind of operation something dropping a bucket of lava it, as it breaks then it gets picked up by the vacuum hopper or the item vacuum yeah I keep saying it's a vacuum hopper but it, it's an item vacuum it works really well have it facing up down left right whatever you want and it works excellent uh, and of course very very cheap just needs a redstone signal in order for it to function luckily you can turn it off so that when you drop things they won't pick them up anymore now let's say that uh, you want to actually do a lot more, you know, obsidian making with something similar to this. This is just a hypothetical situation here. Uh, let, that will lead us into another item, and that is going to be our reservoir, which before we cover that, though, I will briefly cover the mechanical access, which I did cover previously. Now, down here in the bottom, uh, let me grab one of these, break it. We have a mechanical core. And that is what I'm talking about. This here, if I if I break this, which let me grab another copy of this as well. Empty this stuff out here. Grab my bucket, bucket of lava because I am going to need that. Um, break that. You can see here on the bottom of a reservoir, which I am about to show you, is a mechanical core, which is also used. One moment. For those that remember Natural Energy Part 1, down here, uh, I have a mechanical core on top of the... Uh, Ember bore, uh, which is useful for piping multiple things out of one outlet or inlet or, well, dual purpose items. You can use it for other things like fluids, in this case, a reservoir. Now, uh, I'm actually going to grab a reservoir here so that I can show you guys what that looks like. It is just a single block that is, uh, it looks like this in the single block form. Uh, but it's made with a bunch of cabinet stairs, a fluid vessel, and a couple of iron ingots. Now, with uh, this being created, it is actually a multi-block structure. Once I place it on the ground, it takes up a 3x3x1 three by three by area, and it can be useful for storing things. But that's not all. You're going to need cabinet rings. 
Now, Caminite ring, uh, actually, here, let me type this in here. Recipe for that one is a bunch of Caminite brick walls, Caminite bricks. It, it's very simple, but you can stack this multiple times. And every time that you stack something on top, you are adding another 40 buckets worth of liquid that you can store, uh, not, uh, which is really, really cool. But on the bottom, as I showed you, it only has one inlet slash outlet. Therefore, I recommend you use yourself a mechanical core so that you can therefore, uh, well, access it to pump things in or out of uh, because it adds uh, options on the four sides. Now, in this case, I just put down a few Caminite brick walls, uh, you know, just these little guys here uh, as some kind of visual structure, which I think is cool because you could use this as like a water tower design, just, you know, if, it, if you're keeping it uh, dwarfy, then you could keep it underground water tower. I don't know, but uh, you get the idea. It says in here that it's got a whole bunch of lava in it. And now if I go up above, it will actually render this and it will, it should store most, if any, uh, fluids that you want, uh, regardless of temperature or anything of that nature. You just need to be able to pump it in. So in this case, I have uh, none in here that is currently off. So I'm going to pump a bunch of lava into the fluid vessel. You see it now has eight buckets in there. Turn that on and it drains into this, which then raises up even higher. And you can see it just slowly will raise up. I think it actually maxed out at this point. Yeah, it, it, it's maxed out. So I'd have to add in another Kamenite ring, which uh, there we go. Now, if I start pouring this, you might be able to see it start going in there. Let me actually close that. Fill this up a lot and then pump it in. And you can see it will fill up into, <laughs> into this, which you can, of course, pump it right back out with the same thing. You just put a, a fluid pump coming out, coming out of it and going into something else. Now, in this case, I have the, uh, the tank, which is empty at the moment, attached to another pump, which if I click the lever, it then will start pumping it back into this tank. There you go. You can see it's now filling up with lava from the uh, Kamenite rings enhanced uh, <laughs> reservoir. And that's pretty much it for what I'm covering in part one. Uh, part two, we're going to be covering uh, basically how to melt metals, uh, how to move around ember, how to store ember, uh, as well as how to combine metals to make alloys and dawnstone. Uh, also, we're going to be covering the hearth coil, which will help you cook all sorts of foods, items, and other things. So, if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to give a like, comment, subscribe, as always, if you haven't already, and don't be afraid to spread the mischief to others if you think they'll enjoy this content as well. Until next time, folks, I'll see ya.